Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode two of the Battlefield Podcast. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about mental illness and faith. Stay tuned. are back with us today and uh, this is a very important issue Uh, it is important to me for various reasons but I kind of want to reiterate why we call this the battlefield because um, the battlefield is uh, a place where um, a lot of things are happening all at once it's very chaotic Mm. it's very scary Uh, it's very uh, it's uh, the, the main thing in a battlefield is stress. And there's a lot of different people, a lot of different back, backgrounds come together to do one thing, and that's to survive. And so what we want to do today in the battlefield is to talk about how can we do that when we struggle, perhaps, with mental illness. Uh, many of you may not know from my background, but I was once a, a former Marine, so my battle with mental illness had to do with PTSD and I had it uh, pretty bad and I had it back in the day when they were like um, just suck less do better get over it Um, they didn't even call it PTSD and so that manifested in my life uh, to such a a point where um, I almost couldn't function in my marriage in my work with my kids Uh, and I had to do something about it Um, and in my own personal story uh, the Lord is my savior from uh, and in mental illness so I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about that Um, but I'll pitch it over to you Dr. Rick and tell us what you think yeah so so being a a full-time pastor um, I've I've struggled with some things within my own life also within my my family um, and then also ministering to a lot of people that that have dealt with all kinds of life experiences that sometimes have led into mental illness. And uh, it was part of the reason that I, I did my doctorate in pastoral counseling was because I didn't feel like I was well equipped to help connect the truths of scripture into that particular area of, of bridging into how to, how to help someone get better besides just saying kind of like, here's what the Bible says. Here's what you're doing. Stop doing that. Do this. <laughs> yeah. uh, instead of being able to bridge Give them, give them a how bridge. How do I do that? You know, um, but I, I personally, you know, <laughs> and a lot of pastors won't admit this, uh, unfortunately. But um, I think it's healthy for us because of ministry. I've dealt with things like anxiety, worry, depression. Uh, my wife has has dealt with some of those things to the extent of even suicidal ideation. And so we were kind of confronted as 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 a pastoral family and leaders with. Like, what's that mean for my faith? Like, what's that mean when I'm trying to lead other people in a faith community yeah. and spiritually that I, I've got these own, my own struggles with this? And so, uh, so there's lots of, lots of experiences with it, and that's the reason that I think this is a, a huge, huge area, you know? Yeah. Well, um, man, I'm glad y'all shared that. Uh, one of my things was, since being an a entrepreneur, I felt like I would always have to be in control of everything. And you also get this sense of everybody around you expecting you, you know, to, to do the best and always be the best. And ah, I don't need any help. And um, I didn't realize that that was mentally breaking me down as well. I mean, uh, my marriage, my, with my relationship with my kids, everything, because I was trying to fulfill something that I wasn't really understanding and was, wasn't really trying to fulfill. And I think it was anxiety, mm-hmm. you know, um, because you get... Uh, sense of like, uh, you know, like um, how how am I going to do this? I have to keep this up, this uh, sort of persona up, you know, to to please everybody and to help everybody because they were depending on me in a lot of different mental ways. Um, so uh, that was a struggle that I had, and it really didn't come to light until maybe like a year ago. You know, at wow, first you're yeah. just thinking that's just the way it is, mm-hmm. um, and nobody's really looking asking you from being a leader, um, you know, do you need help? Do you, right. hey, what's going on in your life? And things like this. So uh, that became just a natural thing. So I didn't even realize I was I was dealing with anything mental because growing up, I was uh, 
I didn't take any. I mean, even growing up, even when I got older, headaches. Oh man, I didn't need no as you know. I didn't need no aspirin. I didn't need nothing. You know, if it gets sick, I I could bowl through it. You know what I'm saying? And that, in a sense, may be mental yeah. health too, because you're thinking that you should be able to handle everything when some things you're supposed to hand off. Mm -hmm. And for me, it, it didn't stop there with just mental struggles because of my mental struggles. It led to all kinds of addictions yes. in my life. Yeah because I didn't know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to shut up the noise in my head and I would do whatever I could do to do that, which were not healthy things. Yes. Yeah, so that's, um, that's kind of where we want to camp today. Mm -hmm. What do we do? Um, because I, I, I know that I'm not alone. No, <laughs> no. And so, yeah. Yeah, I think that uh, within church and communities of faith, <clears throat> because faith is such a huge part of of it you know obviously but what can happen is there's these stigmas that you know particularly right. used to i think the church is, is starting to be more accepting and, and seeking to be more understanding of struggles that people have in this area because um, before there were kind of two main stigmas either a person was saying they have a mental illness struggle just because they want a, attention mm -hmm. or they were simply just needed more faith. If you just had that's that was the prescription given for a long time within the church. Um, now, like I said, with and it, it helped me to, to like I said, do my uh, some further study in this area to understand. Sometimes there's actually physical things going on, physiological things. There's chemical imbalances that can take place where where you might need, um, might need a, a medication to help stabilize so that you can think clearly to address it. And the goal should, I, I think, always be, if it's possible, to come off of that medication and not become reliant to it, but sometimes that's not possible. Um, and so, so anyway, sometimes it's just, hey, you're trying to get attention or sometimes you're trying to, uh, you just need more faith. And, and I've watched some family members that struggled with, um, you know things like anxiety uh, attacks and separation anxiety and some other things that were given that advice over and over and so they struggled for decades until they finally got connected with someone that could help them and said and said that very thing you know you needed some some uh, uh, there's a chemical imbalance take place you need some medication to help regulate that and then they were able to you know really think clearly and so uh, I want to hit on some of the prevalence of, of mental health because I think if you don't struggle with it yourself, and, and when I say some of this stuff, if you're a mental health professional watching this, uh, man, thank you for everything you do. Yeah, right. But also there's probably gonna be some things you'd probably want me to to clarify or even correct me on, and, and that's okay. Definitely give us that feedback yes. uh, because we need it. But um, a lot of times people, if they are not struggling with it themselves or personally connected with someone who's struggling with it, they don't think it's a big deal. Right. So I want to throw some, that's the reason we have our, our notes in our hands, uh, some, some prevalence of uh, and some stats connected to, and this is from uh, NAMI.org, which is the National Alliance on, uh, of uh, Mental Illness, I believe. Um, and so 20% of people, so one in five will experience mental illness each year. Um, so 20% of our population. Depression, 10% of Americans will experience it. And then 5% will attempt suicide as it, as depression uh, progresses our adolescents have the fastest uh, rate or the fastest growing rate of depression and then most people who have depression don't actually seek medical attention um, anxiety is another one that's that's becoming more common and about 30 percent of people will experience anxiety at some point in their life and women are 60 percent more likely than men to experience anxiety um, and an interesting one, for whatever reason, Caucasians are most likely to experience um, anxiety. Um, so it's a, that was a little bit backwards from a lot of the other stats that we find as it relates to mental illness, because a lot of other stats, uh, mental illness uh, affects uh, communities of color, African Americans, uh, Hispanic, more than it does Caucasians. So this is one of the ones where it's actually flipped a little bit. Uh, which is, I'm not sure, you know, why or, or what. Um, hey, Dr. Nichols. Yes, sir. What are some causes of mental illness? Yeah, um, so I so want to give some real broad uh, definitions <laughs> of some of that. Um, 
so the, we experience lots of different things and, and some of those causes yes. we're going to try to give simple terms for them yeah. again if you're a mental health professional there's a lot more clinical terminology that goes along with these but we're going to give real broad categories um, so if you experience a loss of, of trust or um, where someone who was supposed to protect you didn't mm -hmm. or they were the the offender against you somehow that can lead to things like trauma, abuse, anger, unforgiveness, uh, other things like that. Uh, when you have a loss of control, that leads to stress mm -hmm. and fear. Um, a loss of peace leads to anxiety yes. and worry, um, not knowing what the future holds. Um, and then loss of hope is really kind of the root of depression and suicide. And, and one thing to note on all these is that we have what's called comorbidity. Comorbidity is simply that often there, there are some mental illnesses and mental struggles that once you start experiencing them, there's another one comes on top and you start kind of compounding okay. effect. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, an example is that a lot of times with uh, sexual abuse survivors, um, particularly with women, they also usually deal with or, or can one of the, the higher prevalence uh, comorbidities is eating disorders. Mm. So sometimes that makes sense. So sometimes you'll see somebody with an eating disorder and they think that's all that there is to it, but as you dig deeper, you find that there was something else connected to it. Um, so all of those things, it, that's life. That is the yes. battlefield, yeah. right? I mean, how many yes. times have you felt like somebody's broken your trust or things have been out of control or things you don't have peace about or, you know, it seems like you're not sure where your hope's going to come from? Like, you know. Yeah, and you know that 20% of all people, five, uh, one out of five people experience mental illness each year. Mm -hmm. uh, when you said that, does that mean that it's going to go away and then they're going to experience it again That's next awesome. year? You know, so, mm -hmm. so can you explain that? Like a little bit? Yeah, so you can have, so you're talking about with depression or anxiety? Or just all of them. It says 20% of one, one in one five people experience mental illness. So does a mental does it go away and then it comes back? Or? So people can have uh, recurring events. Oh, okay. Yeah, so like, so someone that kind of is feeling depressed, they may get better and they're, start, they're starting to feel better and a, an event or something can trigger and throw them back into a depression or something like that. And so almost all of these, because if we, if we believe that there's a, a, a route of health, Right? Mm -hmm. So if, if we're struggling with mental illness and we believe that we can get better, that also mean, means that there are things that can happen that can help, that can cause us to slide back into mm -hmm. those things. So anxiety, you know, there's, that's the reason we talk about triggers a lot of times because people talk about things triggering their, uh, whatever they might struggle with, with mental health. And so, yeah. You know, that's, that's interesting because we, whenever we talk about mental illness, mental health, mm -hmm. we rarely talk about what you just said because that, that just clicked in my mind that okay, it's a season. Mm -hmm. It can yeah. it like if it like if it can last for a little while, we could put more focus on okay, this isn't gonna last, you know, forever. Or I can look back at the last time it happened and realize I got over it. Uh, and could you think we could put more focus on um, how that how we got over it or what yeah. we went through to kind of help cope? Because I've never. That was very interesting. I said, how can you have it, you know, one in five each year? You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's almost like uh, the flu or something, you know? Mm -hmm. And how did you get over it last year? So you think we could kind of uh, kind of combat these by focusing on the things that kind of got us through? I think so. I think you've got to there, – there's two things. You've got to give honest uh, acknowledgement and consideration yes. to the problem. Yeah, be, yeah. and, and you've got to let the problem be a real problem because I think that's what within church a lot of times it becomes dismissive. Oh, okay, you're struggling with that. Okay, I get it. You know, and then it just becomes dismissive. So you're not really saying it's a real problem, but you have to deal with it as a real problem. Uh, and I do believe that there are spiritual components to it. I believe that there, uh, you know, Satan can attack in these areas to throw us, you know, throw yes. us off in all these areas. But so one of the things we do that I do in, in pastoral counseling, I, I do what's called solution focused pastoral counseling. Love it already. So, so what you do is you spend some time on the problem you know what we call the presenting problem somebody comes there's a reason they came for counseling right and so you you find out what's the presenting problem and then now you start to shift you start to help them shift and say what do you want the future to look like what do you what's what's the solution that you see 
and you start helping them to then set goals and work towards that where they they come up with the goals they uh, they formulate them they they set the solution and, and we ask a question uh, in solution focused pastoral counseling is you ask them what we call the miracle question so if you woke up tomorrow and through the night God did a miracle and this problem is gone what would how would your day be different how would you interact with people differently and and so there's a principle of that if they can imagine their life without it they can work towards achieving that reality um, and and so then you start saying okay what prevents you from acting that way now and because there's sometimes that our our, uh, our behavior our thoughts everything that they, they follow a train you know they don't uh, and so sometimes if we get too focused on the problem for too long, you know, we talked about it before, is that it becomes our identity, um, and we don't know how to live without it. Yes. And, and it can become a convenient excuse. There are some people that I, I think use their mental illness as a convenient excuse to behave poorly or treat people poorly. Um, but, yeah, we, we have to focus on what the solution is. You know? So I have a question. Sure. And I kind of like to be real and raw at times so so in the middle of my struggles um, the noise in my head and in my heart would be so loud that I couldn't hear advice I couldn't hear my friends or my family and even uh, I couldn't hear my Lord I could not hear my faith through the pain yeah does that make sense yeah absolutely okay so to somebody who is in that noise, how do you bust through that pain in order to hear the things that will help? Because I spent years, and you talk about you know, the cycle or seasons. My journey was kind of like a roller coaster because I'd do really good and really bad, and really good and really bad, and really good and really bad, and it never ended. And the descent into the really bad was really fast. Mm. And the climb back up to the really good was really slow. And the really good was not very long. Yeah. And that happened for years and years and years until I just kind of got to this point in my life where I guess nothing's going to help. This is just the way I'm going to be. Mm-hmm. So back to the question, how, how does somebody break through that pain in order to hear the help. Okay. So is that a fair question? Yeah, yeah no, okay. I think so, yeah. Because, uh, so another tool that we like to use in solution focused pastoral counseling is called finding the exceptions. And so when you had really good times, really, you know, things were going smooth, you weren't struggling as much, what was different from the really low times? Or, or, or maybe even what, what triggered the descent? So like when, you're, when you felt like you were doing better, things were getting healthier, what was different about those times versus the really low times? Uh, looking back on it, my proximity, my closeness, my intimacy with God. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But then in, in the descent, you started to feel like you couldn't hear him. Or, yeah. or at times, yeah, yeah, so there's distance. There's, uh, you know, also times where maybe, and you, you tell me if this is true, because I've experienced it in my life, <laughs> times where I didn't want to hear what he had to say. Yeah, yes. You know, and so there was kind of a... Or the uh, work seemed too hard. Yes. Or, yeah, so yeah. or even too simple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, it's one of those things that I, I tell people, a little bit of success is both a blessing and a curse. Um, because when you start having a little bit of success, um, and, and, and even what should be an encouragement to us when someone else is having success doesn't feel like encouragement when we're struggling right mm-hmm. um, and, and so with that little bit of success we either do one of two things it propels us to keep drawing near close you know closer to God or it it says oh I'm starting to get a handle on this I don't need, need to listen yeah. to God mm-hmm. anymore so that happened all the time oh I'm better and then I drop my guard uh-huh. what happens when you drop your guard in, in the boxing ring you get tagged so <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think and I think truth is a huge part of it too is is you know uh, like we we do at the church we have those uh, we have those identity uh, cards we use in, in um, uh, addiction recovery ministry and stuff but is operating on what what is true because right. our minds lie to us oh yes and our emotions yeah. lie to us um, and then what happens is we start to feel like uh, and, 
and we, we catastrophize. We, we say, because this one thing, then that may happen, then all of this other stuff's gonna happen with it. Um, and so was that, that your experience? What, what started you drawing you back to God after you felt the distance? It, it was the truth. It okay. was the truth all the way around. The truth of my, uh, my circumstances. I'm a mess. I need to get better. Um, I'm not going to do it on myself. I need the Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I really began to apply the truths that I found in Scripture, and at the risk of sounding churchy, there's a lot of people that ask me, how come you're a Christian? And my simple answer is, it was the only thing that worked. Mm-hmm. And so when I, and it was because of those truths. Yeah. Um, those truths became more powerful than my addictions, more powerful than my anxiety, more powerful than my wor- worry, until slowly but surely, not overnight, um, the peace began to reign. And, and I can look back on it and see, you know, see the differences. So when you were at one of your low points, if somebody were to say, said to you, you just need to have more faith, how did that impact you in those moments of really low? low Absolutely moments? none. <laughs> Anger, pretty much. Uh-huh. Um, I basically was the person that had to come to the end of myself mm-hmm. each time. I, yeah. I didn't want to hear people. And, and I was also the one that tried to put on the mask. I, I was okay. I, I, I'm handling this. It's all right. And, but I was not. And uh, so, yeah, those, those little, oh, yeah, read uh, these scriptures and pray and you'll be better. No. Um, but when I began to do that, uh, here's, here was my plan, okay? And this is what I, I tell people all the time. Um, I believe that God speaks to us five different ways, okay? He speaks to us through prayer. He speaks to us through reading the Bible. He speaks through us through going to church. He speaks to us through good friends and the circumstances in life. Mm-hmm. So if I'm not praying, if I'm not going to church, if I'm not reading the Bible, and if I'm not hanging out with the right people, then God only has one way to work in my life, and that's the circumstances in life, and they are not good. Those circumstances, when I begin to see the truth, wow, wow, I need to pray a little bit. I need to seek some advice from godly people. Started going to church, which gave me a desire to read my Bible. When I began to have five ways for God just to spill into my life, and I did everything every day to try and keep those five ways open, things change. Oh, that's powerful. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely. powerful, man. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, because I think when we say when we say faith, you know, faith is like uh, it it is the response to our perception of what we believe right. to be true, mm-hmm. right? And so it's kind of a multifaceted definition, <laughs> but but it is one of those things. Is again, how how do I have more faith? If I need more faith, yes. how do I have more faith? Like I, I, I and and you just described it just then. We have to open up pathways for the truth and open up pathways for God's word. And I think that's so key because a lot of times in churches, what happens is we, if somebody questions, and that's one of the things I tell you, you don't get answers unless you ask questions, yes, right? Yes. Um, and, and so for a long time in the church, if people had questions about, well, how does where does Scripture speak about this particular struggle, and you know, or or this particular thing, what do I do? The, a lot of times the church, and I've known pastors even, they were like, oh, that means you're doubting, so therefore you need to get that straight. Don't doubt till you've got the answers you want. Well, I don't get the answers I want until I ask the question. Ask questions. <laughs> right, you know, so, um, yeah, and, and the truth is, is that not only have we experienced different forms of, of good mental health, poor mental health, mental illness, all that, it's a human condition. Yes. It, it is. And so if it's a human condition, and we believe that the people in the Bible were real people, and, and we, we do believe that, then we would see it in some of their lives. And, and the reality is that we do. And so I have a sum that I share with you. Okay. King David experienced, um, it's the Bible uses some different terms than we do from as far as like medical or, or psychological uh, terminology. But it tells us that he was deeply troubled and battled deep despair. So what's that sound like to you guys? Like mm-hmm. deep despair or deeply troubled? Depression. Yeah, it's like in a hole, like in his mind. Like, right. Uh, like, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, deep despair. So Psalm uh, 38, 4 says, Why are you downcast, my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. So he's like talking to his own soul. Yeah. He's like, what's going on within me? Why are you so like downcast? And, and he goes on. Um, uh, another case study in the Bible is Elijah. You know, so Elijah tells us was discouraged, weary, afraid, and even suicidal. Like yeah. he had some suicidal ideation. He wanted to die. He, he didn't try to kill himself. But, um, you know, so you, you could probably remember the instance that uh, that takes place in. Do you remember with Elijah? The, so he has a Mount Carmel oh, experience. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and then uh, he takes on all the prophets of, of uh, Baal. And, yeah, there's the whole... Uh, mountaintop experiences where we say, hey, hey, the first one to get God to show up in our prayers, that's the one whose God is real. Yeah. And yeah, that didn't end up good for those guys. Not for those guys. <laughs> so he, he, he does this and God hears yeah. his prayer. Mm -hmm. he, he, comes, he, he comes down, uh, brings fire down, burns up the altar. That's 1 Kings 18. He ends with this great victory. Yeah. And then in the very next chapter, 1 Kings 19, it says that Jezebel, the, the uh, she sends a message to him says because you killed all my prophets I am going to uh, if uh, what was it that sh she said by this time tomorrow yes. if you're not done the same way I'm going to do the same to you oh wow he just faced hundreds of these <laughs> yeah. false prophets uh, but one woman yeah. gets on him and he really and so that just I guess shows you you know puts the fear in all of us right uh, but he runs yeah. and he's afraid and and it tells us that uh, eventually he goes he goes and hides um, he goes away from uh, he had a, a, a companion a servant that went with him he separates himself from them he goes in and he lays down and what it says in First Kings nineteen four he says I've had enough Lord take my life I'm not any better than my ancestors <laughs> hey you know what, what think of, like you just said that just goes back to the the human condition look at that change yes. yeah. Like you said, what way and here, way yeah, way. <laughs> and we start to think, okay, what really spurred that? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? How could you just lose sight of what you did or what happened, what occurred, and now get down to the to to this bottom? That's that's very interesting to think about and and contemplate. But it's also amazing how God put those type of real human experiences that we experience. You literally just we're talking about this, Pastor. You know. And uh, for us to to recognize mm -hmm. and realize that there's a lot more people. People are going through this, you know, thousands of years ago. Yes. So yes. that's that's a really uh, great picture. I mean, it's not a great picture, but yeah, yeah. It, it should give us some sense of hope to where yeah. uh, we realize that we're not the only one. You know? right. So, man, that's, that's yeah. Well, and the reason why is because Jezebel had a history of killing prophets. Oh, so she she wasn't it wasn't <laughs> idle talk. She's like, I'm going to get you, sucker. And she's like, because I got them. You know, you know, those guys. And, and she is coming after him. Um, and so all of a sudden, yeah, there was a fear switch that switched Just on. Switched. Yeah. That, well, he was facing hundreds of these other guys. And and then God was faithful to yeah. protect him, faithful to bring what down fire, to that? all yes. that. And then all of a sudden it was like, why can't God protect you against Jezebel? Why can't, you know, and he goes through and what's crazy is in his depressive episode, what happens is God doesn't send an angel to uh, preach a message to him. God <laughs> sends an angel to bring him food and let him rest. Oh, wow. He brings him food and water. Yeah. And so what we see is, and a lot of times when somebody comes and they're dealing with a big problem, I ask them basic self-care questions. How are you sleeping? How's your diet? Are you exercising? Mm -hmm. You know, things like that. Because... When Elijah was at his worst, God said, take a nap, eat some food, drink some water, you know, then we're going to get up. And, and he did that through a couple of cycles and then said, now we're going to walk for, and he, he says he walks for 40 days. And then, and then what happens is there he has an encounter with God on a different mountain, but all these big things happen. It says that there's fire comes through, there's earthquake, there's this great wind. And it says that God wasn't in any of those things. It was in a still small voice, like a whisper. Um, you know, so so while God showed up with fire from heaven one chapter before, He was showing Elijah. Yeah. And he's like, I'm I'm not just in those big things. I'm in I'm in this the minutia the, <laughs> you know, the healing power of sleep and food and and some of those things and just stay quiet enough to listen. You know, and I think <laughs> that, you know, and yeah, and so uh, so anyway, Elijah, hero of the faith, but struggled with this. Yes. Uh, 
Another dude is Jonah. We all kind of know the story of Jonah, you know. But he, his was a little bit different. He, he was, uh, so he got super angry, um, so much so he tried to run away from God, and he even says that he wants to die. And then he gets mad when God works in the Ninevites' lives. Like when he's, like literally his prayer, he gets the chance to preach the greatest revival sermon in history to approximately probably 200,000 people and gets mad. One, he runs from it. Then when he finally does it, gets mad that God offers a redemption for them and they actually repent and they actually start like, well, we might call getting saved or something, you know. And so, yeah, and Jonah, he says, now, Lord, take my life for it's better for me to die than to live. And then in, in uh, verse nine of that chapter, he says, I'm angry enough to die. Oh, my gosh. This, this, this sounds like us today. You know, yes. that, like over exaggerating to the yes. point to where. Yes. It's like, <laughs> yeah. So. Hey, these are some good picks. Right? Yeah, uh, and then you go into uh, Job. So we oh, probably yes. all know Job's yeah. story, but Job, uh, for no nothing that he did, he, he loses everything. You know, he um, really it was because he had did everything right, um, but he loses his family, his wealth, uh, his home, everything in a very short period of time. And he one day, I think it's in one it day. Yeah, day. within literally hours during a birthday party. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Loses like ten children. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like oh, uh, it's yeah. crazy. I like the bad news just kept getting worse. Yeah. It's like a series of unfortunate yeah. events. It just kept getting worse as people came in. Like, hey, I got news for you, Job. He's like, it can't be worse than all my livestock died. Well, all your kids got killed, and mm-hmm. you know, like, um, and, and so there's several times where he expresses honestly his emotions. Like, yeah, I mean, because you, we look back, and if we're not careful. We will look at these heroes of scripture and make them superheroes yes. that weren't real people. Yes. We make them Marvel characters, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, and DC characters. Like we, we, but the reality is, we were real people had real struggles. And so, like some of the things he said, I'll just read off several of them. He said, "Why did I not perish at birth and die as I came out of the womb?" He's like, "It'd have been better for me to die, you know, than to my, go through yeah, all this. than to go through all this." He says, "I have no peace." No quietness. I have no rest. Only turmoil. In chapter 10, he says, I loathe my very life. Therefore, I will give friendly to rain, give, give free rain to my complaints and speak out in bitterness from my soul. And then in uh, Job 30, uh, he says, terrors overwhelm me. My life ebbs away. Days of days of suffering grip me. Night pierces my bones. My gnawing pains never rest. Man, you know what really stands out? This, these are circumstances now, mm-hmm. right? Things that he had no control over. And I think a lot of times when we're dealing with that mental health, and like, and like me and my anxiety, there was a lot of things that I thought I was just, I was on point, right? Yeah. Then they just came out of nowhere. And yes. it's like, you know, yeah. like, why, why is this happening when I thought I did this, did this, did this? And this is something that, um, things that just, don't make sense mm-hmm. to happen. Um, so I can could, I could really uh, yeah. get with Job on this yeah. because, I mean, he's, he's taking it to the point to where he doesn't even care what he's saying no more. Mm-hmm. Like he said, he give free reign to all this bad stuff that I want to say. Right. Um, so I can deal it. Now, how do you, how, so when somebody's dealing with circumstances, just from you guys' professional uh, circumstance, uh, position, how do, what do you think, and how, how does somebody deal with circumstances you can't, you can't, I know you can't control many things, but you know, how, do, how does somebody deal with, with that to where it doesn't overwhelm them? Mm-hmm. You want to answer that first? You want me to? Uh, wow. That's it, a good, I, I, I just I passed it over. Pass <laughs> like, <laughs> was that fair? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, <sighs> you know, I, I think Job has the answer, and it's not an answer that we want to hear. Oh, man. Yes. Um, because. Uh, one of my favorite lines of Job is, um, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Mm, yeah. And um, even when circumstances, and we're talking about the battlefield here, mm-hmm. things going crazy, chaotic, unplanned for, coming at you all at once, um, it falls back to, uh, are you going to trust in your own power, right. or are you going to trust in the Lord? Um for me, uh, as for me in my house, yes. uh, we yeah. will serve the Lord. But uh, it, I, I realize that it isn't that easy mm-hmm. for a lot of people. Um, you know, 
poor Joe. He's sitting there in the dirt, scraping his sores with a right, rock, yeah, yeah. and his friends come up. Hey. There's three of them, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and they start talking to each other. Man, I think he sinned too much. Man, I don't know what's wrong with him. What do you think's wrong? And they're and he's sitting there scraping, you know, <laughs> instead of saying, hey, let me help you scrape your swords with a rock or whatever. Right. They push it. I mean, I, you know. Um, well, and even his wife, you know, she tells him, you need to curse God and die. Yeah. That was his advice. That was the loving advice <laughs> yeah. from his yeah. wife. Yeah. <laughs> Just his curse God. His I got chores to do. Yeah. Curse <laughs> God and die. Is yeah. What you need to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> loving advice. Right? Yeah. But it, it goes back. Um, you know, it, there's plan A or plan B. It's God's way or the other way. And uh, trusting the Lord, which is a, a tall order. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. So I like. Well, I'm gonna, one more thing. So. When you're saying trust in the Lord, um, we're talking about Job, kind of get back to what your purpose was that God gave you and focus on, stay on that course, no matter what is coming on. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So is that kind of what you're saying? Because the other option would to be what his wife said, just die. Yeah. Or do I trust in the Lord? Yeah. What cross did he give me to bear? And do I yeah. keep going forward? Right. Well, and I realize in things, okay, I am not in control. Okay. God obviously is. Yes. Okay. So I will trust the one who is. And I got to keep moving. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, my, wow. grand, my granddad always gave me the best advice. He said, pray, son, but row for the shore. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Um, uh, trust in the Lord, but keep doing what I know to do. I yeah. love it. And yeah. eventually, I come out the other side. Yeah. Um, and uh, what is the scripture? That the Lord will always... There is always a way out. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, sometimes it's difficult to find. And maybe in some areas of my life, I'm still not on the, uh, out on the other side yet. But I'm still rowing. So, man, um, that's, 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 that's tough. And we understand it. That's, that's pretty yeah, tough, Dan. Yeah. But that is, that is the truth. And I, and I stand by that one. I, I, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, I think it comes down to... <clears throat> Do we believe truly believe in God's sovereignty? Yes, and, and because, uh, and I think this is where you get some theological things come into our, uh, particularly as Christians, uh, uh, that shape how we respond to difficulties. Because we have some denominations that teach that if you're following God, nothing bad will ever happen to you. But we've got the, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, not to name no, no. Uh, but there are some that tell you this. So the ones that, that preach more of the health and wealth, mm -hmm. they believe that God wants you to always be uh, financially successful, healthy. But but that negates is is some of the examples we have, like with Job, what we have with yeah. the apostles. Like all the apostles, they they all lived very them. poor lives. They also uh, ended up all being martyred. You yeah. know, so. So it has to shift our idea. If, if we believe that God is sovereign in good things, we have to believe that he's also sovereign in bad things. Is he still a good God when I have a bad day? Right? Uh, <laughs> and, that's the podcast title. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, and so, yeah, and so, so we have to, so what I told our kids growing up, Amy and I did, was, <clears throat> so with that issue of control, what things do you actually have control over? You have control over your thoughts, your words, and your actions. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. You don't have control, you know, over what your kids do, what your boss does, what somebody at the store does, what a politician does. You don't have control over <laughs> any of that stuff. You don't have control over the weather. You don't. No. All you have is control over how you respond to those things. And when we trust that, that God is good, so there's three things we, we say at the church uh, quite often. There's three things that if you believe these, you can get through a lot of things in life. If you believe that God is good, right? Um, if you believe that he's in control, so you have a good God that's in control, and you believe that he loves you. If you believe those three things, then what happens is if you're going through difficult situations, you know that even though the situation is really difficult, God can bring something good out of it. He's either going to develop us, he's going to help us grow, he's going to humble us, he's going to do something that's going to make us better on the other side because he's, he's good, he's in control, and he loves us. Um, there are some things that God has chosen can only be developed through really difficult things. I, I agree. You know, and so how do, you, how do you learn to have, like, say, greater faith um, is you have to have that faith tested. Yeah. 
And then how does that faith get tested? Well, it's when something happens and God is silent for a little while. Do I still believe he's in control? Do I still believe he's good? Do I still, you know, believe he loves me? That's then, then that grows our faith. And so, yeah, I think that it's, it's that, that same thing of like being honest about what we actually have control. Like, Mm -hmm. and, and not using bad circumstances to justify bad behavior. Oh, yes. Because that becomes a convenient excuse. We tell our kids all the time, say, you don't let, you don't justify committing a sin in your life because someone else committed a sin in theirs against you. Right? And so uh, that's difficult. And you know? that's it difficult is. in life. And so. That is, okay, so this is difficult. Everything we're talking about is difficult. But don't we want a God, don't we want to serve a goddess? beyond our kind of understanding we don't want to be able to understand everything god does because then he would just be like us you know what i mean just to put logic in yeah. you know in the whole uh talk about god you know and i i, I was I, I used to think about that it's like man if i can understand him if he would he would be god it, you know so it has to be some type of understanding but then also even when with my kids you have to let them go through stuff mm-hmm. to learn if we yeah, just did yeah. every little thing yeah. for them, and then when they get 18, you kick them out, and then you're like, okay, you should know. No, they shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. have to let yes. them grow a little bit and yeah. let them make their own choices. So I, I feel like uh, in, we're not talking bad about the mental health and how um, it's anybody's fault. What we're talking about is some solutions to right. kind of see the light on the battlefield. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just to see just the inkling of light and then uh, yeah. rely on the foundation like you you, right. you you put it so uh man it, this has been really good let's do the pro let's do our promise to those that are struggling so to those that are struggling right now they they listen to our podcast they want to know more what what do we uh what is the promise here's 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 the one that meant the most to me other than of course god being active in my life is to realize that you you are not alone Okay, I love it. Only, only John Wayne charged the hill by himself. Yeah. And where is John Wayne today? <laughs> He's dead. Yes. Um, you need your battle buddies. Mm-hmm. You can't do it alone. Yeah. Um, you know, society tells us, especially America, well, you're the man. You're supposed to be big and yes. strong and not ask for help. But, um, man, you you got to realize you need your battle buddies. They, they're watching the parts of the battlefield that you can't see, mm-hmm. and they will help you. Um, these gentlemen here with me today have inspired me and helped me more than they even know. And um, they, uh, you know, if, if you're struggling, if some of these things that we have talked about today um, have hit home, then by all means, seek help. Seek help from somebody you know really well and somebody you trust and um, realize that you are not alone. There are people who will, uh, who will go to the wall and, and fight with you in the battlefield. And um, I, my prayer is for that you find those people mm-hmm. because they make the battle easier. Yeah. And uh, so realize, I guess for me, is that you're not alone. You, there are people in your life who will help um, seek help don't be afraid of it and also you know seek the Lord you're you're definitely not alone where he is concerned yeah yeah I think about uh, like 2 Corinthians 1 4 where it tells us to to comfort others in their affliction as God comforted us in our affliction anything that we go through that has developed us grown us or that we've struggled with becomes really a way we can minister to someone else because now we have a, a, an experience yes. you know but God gives us some promises um, Psalm uh, 34 18 says the Lord is close to the brokenhearted um, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit um, he's promised that if we seek him he will be there um, I would kind of speak to leaders real quick um, and, and Christians <sighs> be compassionate Like the thing that we seem to miss so much in Christianity, particularly in America, is we we fight, you know, the church fights for truth and the church fights for, but we've forgotten how to be considerate, compassionate, and kind while still 
teaching the truth. Um, that means we've got to be patient. We've got to be, you know, we've got to listen more than we talk. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, um, but, man, it is. Uh, and so be, be compassionate. If, if uh, you don't know how to help someone that, that's struggling uh, or even if you're, you yourself are struggling, again, reach out for help. There's lots of resources. And I would even say that if you're dealing with something, man, email me. Email us. We're, we want to be able to help. Um, you know, because sometimes it's just getting to verbalize the internal struggle oh, yes. that helps so much. Yeah, getting it out there. <laughs> yeah, so, so that would be kind of my, my thing to leave off on. And know that God has promised that if we seek Him, He'll, he'll bring the healing we need. But if we are uh, dealing with others, to, to be compassionate. Yeah, and just uh, love it. Lo you know, be loving towards them. Be kind in our words. Uh, okay, so what I want to leave with you guys today is that uh, give. Now, I'm not talking about go out and give. I know mental health, you're feeling drained. But if you, this is what I did. One of the things I, I, I promised myself I wanted to do, whenever I catch eyes with somebody, I'm going to say hi. And just giving, just giving a hi because you never know what they're going so through. True. And yeah, if yeah. you could give, the Lord says it's better to give to receive. And that's, a lot of times people don't look at little stuff like that as giving, but you are. You could be yeah. giving hope to somebody. Mm -hmm. You could be giving love to somebody. So if you kind of refocus that depression, you refocus your mental health into giving just a little, just hi or, or uh, thank you or, you know, just doing little stuff like that. Um, it, uh, man, it'll do a, a wonders for your peace and theirs. You never know how you'll be. How you be touching somebody? So uh, looking, looking that, and then reach out to us, man. Because yeah. I mean, like yeah. I said, these guys. Uh, Pastor Mark uh, said he doesn't realize how much he's helped us, but man, these guys have helped me as well. Just being in this brotherhood to do this. So, and we want to share this with you guys. We have a lot of things coming um, to where you'll be able to join us uh, and, and talk a little more intimately. Um, but until then, continue to watch us, like, share. This yes. podcast with everybody you know. We want to make a difference, but we can only make it if we get feedback. We understand what, what way we want to go, but we also want to get uh, some feedback from our audience and people who are um, out there in the battlefield with us. Um, until next time, thank you. We love you, and God bless.